and uh, let me bring up perplexity in the other window i just uh, signed up for perplexity pro so that i can uh, do what i'm gonna do uh, have perplexity answer this question using gpt4 uh, if you are using free account, you can as, also use a copilot for a higher um, quality um, answer. Oh, wait, I didn't use anything. Why is it down tonight? I, I don't know why. Um, but um, I'm just going to um, just use a regular thing, uh, but using GPT-4. So uh, now the way a lot of the questions are presented in this class, they are I, we try to present it in an accessible way. So even though um, if even though GPT can't see images, oftentimes in the description of the question text itself, there will be enough information. And in cases where there isn't, you can um, see the, the, the alt text. So this um, image comes with an accessibility text that actually describes the image. So for some reason, if the, um, wait, that's not it. Now, I think I probably say it's decorative because um, within the question text, I describe enough of it. So the alt text here, I can see. Oh, do I need to scroll? Oh, that's empty. Oh, yeah, it's empty because I've uh, noted it as being decorative. <laughs> so here, the question text should be sufficient. Um, otherwise, I shouldn't have marked it as decorative. So, it's, um, so that's the question. Consider two rubber balls which are two, on two smooth tracks, these two differently shaped tracks. One slopes down faster and then gets uh, uh, not as a steep. One was gentle first and then gets a steeper. Um, how do they compare? That's the question. And it's using GPT-4 because I paid for it. Yeah. But um, I don't know, give it a try with the, uh, so I want you to pay for it because uh, I always want to have better tools than my students to do. <laughs> um, it, it's, uh, perplexity has a different approach than ChatGPT, so it might on its own give better answer than ChatGPT, especially when you are asking knowledge-based questions. So it answers when considering two rubber walls rolling down. Now, you shouldn't be using conservation of energy uh, unless you know a lot of physics already. Because at this point, we are really um, working with the kinematics. So please try to answer this question without using conservation of energy. But uh, you know, let me actually try this because uh, I've seen this answer before and it was correct. So let me actually try to have it answer um, um, without using conservation of energy. So please answer this without using conservation of energy. Let's see. It, it might not do well. I haven't actually tried this, so I don't know. Motion using Newton's laws of motion, which it shouldn't because um, um, but I, it might be difficult. So I, I want restricted from using Newton's laws of motion. Um, Yeah, that the because without using Newton's laws of motion, I think this might be hard to get at. That the, I think a lot of people have intuition that they should have the same speed at the bottom, and that intuition really does come from your intuitive feel for conservation of energy. So um, yeah, but that's the correct answer. And ball and slope will bottom the first because it's a steeper, uh, yeah, which this I'll ignore for now. So you know it accelerates. A, quickly first. So it's uh, going through most of that distance at a higher speed than ball B would. So yeah, um, good answers. Um, yeah, shorter horizontal distance. I think it's saying that mainly because it can't see this picture. Um, um, let me ask this question. How will your answer change if uh, slope A and slope B have the same horizontal distance. Still be the same, good. Uh, that's jumping to some conclusions. Um, but I, I think- Can we use the fact that, you know, th this is a like parallelogram? 
parallelogram. So oh, let me yeah, give that a try. So um, slopes. So that, uh, a, so that the B part, right? Yeah. On the top is same as the one at the bottom. Yeah. Let me ask you the question. So slopes A and B when looked from side from a parallel parallelogram, so that um, they have the same overall distance, uh, but different order of steeper slope coming up. Yeah. Give that a try. <laughs> uh, then still be the same. Yeah, yeah, so that it's not easily confused there in this case. Yeah, I think I've confused it a lot. Um, <laughs> so it's fine. It's the first answer was okay. So uh, let me move on to the second one. And this is actually the kind of question where um, you will see a lot of Czech tutors get it wrong because a uh, part A can be tricky. And uh, it, this is actually the question that ChatGPT was getting wrong last semester. But in my testing earlier today, it um, got it correct. So <laughs> at, at some point, um, you know, at some point, this might actually become a good a teaching tool rather than a cheating tool. Because if we can be reliably be correct, then I, I don't have a... Um, fundamental objection to your using tools like this as long as you're using it to learn rather than cut corners and shit. So looking at part A, tennis ball thrown straight upward. It's giving the correct answer. On the way up, it is in free fall. Um, it's uh, using a rather um, idiosyncratic, it's uh, using the physics definition of free fall, which has nothing to do with uh, the conventional sense of falling where things are, oh, I can hide this. Uh, where things are moving downward, that uh, um, that sense of falling isn't connected to free fall. Uh, things are in free fall if it's moving under a force of gravity alone. So uh, as the ball is moving up, as long as air resistance is negligible, it's in free fall. At the top, it's still in free fall because gravity is the only thing that's having influence. On the way down, it's still in free fall. And, you know, pe most people will think, okay, on the way down, that is in free fall. And what a lot of people may miss is that in the first two scenarios, it was also in free fall. And the other ones, it uh, got be, yeah, not in free fall because the fact that the skydiver is at terminal velocity means they are not accelerating anymore. So, you know, they are at constant velocity. So that must mean there's other forces um, other than gravity that's acting on the skydiver. And that would be the air resistance. And it gets that. Uh, yeah, so it's not in free fall. And C, um, and this is one of those questions where you could go either way. Um, it kind of depends on what, what your interpretation of tethered. You know, is the tether taut? If the tether is taut, the astronaut is about to die, um, then there's a chance that uh, it, the astronaut is not in free fall. Because if the tether is uh, providing significant tension. But in most scenarios where the tether is just there for safety, it's not taut, then yeah, astronaut will be in state of free fall along with the International Space Station. Um, and yeah, the uh, 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 GPT-4 is great. <laughs> um, and again, as long as this helps you learn I don't have any objection to you using it as long as you use it ethically, which means um, you follow these provisions of the syllabus. So within the syllabus, I have a provision for ethical use of AI, um, which says uh, ethical use of AI tools. You have to cite your sources. Uh, I created a discussion topic that a lot of you contributed to that helps you do that, you know, put what your prompt and response was, and you can just refer to that as this is what I used as source. And two, make sure that you review it. It's anything that's wrong, um, it'll, it'll be as if you yourself got it wrong. So, so let me ask you the last question. This uh, is the kind of question that ChatGPT could do poorly on because it relies on video and there's no easy way to put video into um, GPT type uh, device. But because this is such a common scenario, I think uh, it's going to do well still. So I'm just going to basically go with what I copied and pasted, you know, these 
random garbage texts uh, there still. And then let's see what it does. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think it gets confused by the fact that it can't see the video because it knows it can't. It's been trained on not being able to see the video. So it'll just describe the shoot the monkey scenario. Um, or it'll answer the question, you know, at least, uh, or describe three different ways in which you can modify the setup so that the projectile does not strike the monkey. And uh, it, this is kind of, again, common scenario that without, uh, there's enough training text in it to know how to address it. So it gives some of the ideas, now change the aim. It's, uh, so uh, criteria is that at least one of the three ways must uh, not change the aim or the timing. <laughs> so the very first thing it does is it changes the aim and the timing, which fine, as long as that's not the only thing. And the third one, yeah, okay, without changing the aim or timing, increase the error. Yeah, I guess you can change the type of projectile. Yeah, by adding features. It's like it's reading my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll make it miss it. Um, and, uh, you know, this is an open-ended question. This third one, it can be many different things. And I hope, um, and, you know, it's giving you these helpful figures as well, because again, this is such a common scenario that it's seen it many times. Let me ask it uh, just one more time. Uh, uh, could you answer it again and see if for that third um, choice it um, changes uh, with this generative AI sometimes um, it'll um, you know there's a temperature parameter that'll kind of give some uh, spontaneity to its answers or randomness uh, RNG random number generator so the third one oh wait um, so here so this actually doesn't um, uh, so the second answer is wrong because this one make it miss the aim unless you decrease the velocity so much that projectile hits the ground before hitting the monkey. So this is wrong um, and increasing the velocity won't do anything. And this is also the wrong. Uh, in the equations, uh, if, you know, d d using force and stuff that we are not covering this <laughs> week, um, mass will just cancel out because gravity is the only thing significant. And this third one, okay. Uh, um, so if you're just looking for a different third answer, then this is great. Yeah, if you introduce an external force, then yeah, that'll mess up stuff. Uh, external force that's not gravity will mess up stuff. So, yeah, uh, sometimes in kind of looking for a variety, uh, you know, it just at some point you run out of the number of correct answers and <laughs> these two are definitely wrong. So, so yeah, that's uh, the kind of demonstration of um, conceptual questions with the generative AI. We are, so, I don't know. Uh, there was a time in the last semester especially uh, I would have said um, use of tools like ChatGPT is uh, cheating in the class. Um, I'm going to make it slightly more nuanced this semester, um, meaning as long as you use it ethically, meaning if you have used the ChatGPT uh, as you're answering conceptual questions and you want to use any portion of their response, then you should be posting in the discussion and letting, letting me know, letting other people know that you are using it and this is what you've used. You can use it secretly. That is academic dishonesty and that is still banned. But uh, using it openly um, and if uh, somehow these um, response the back and forth with the generative AI tool helped you learn physics. Great, I have no objection to that. Um, use it ethically. <laughs> um, or, you know, if that sounds like too much work, don't use it at all. You are always welcome to not use it at all. Uh, these conceptual questions are meant to be reading check questions. You shouldn't need a lot of advanced tools to answer them satisfactorily. And in fact, when I grade it, you know, I grade it for completion and effort. I don't even grade it for correctness. I hope your peers will grade it for correctness and give you helpful feedback, but I'm not even doing that. So, so that's uh, conceptual questions with GPT-4. Um, oh, I guess I'm out of time. Um, 